You're listening to the Odds Cast, the original UFC betting podcast that's straight to the point. Hosted by leading MMA odds maker Nick Kalikas and MMA journalist Brian Hemminger, they provide you the absolute best UFC betting info, picks, statistics, and analysis from the most respected authority in mixed martial arts betting. MMAoddsbreaker.com. Don't place your wagers without us. Welcome to the Combate Cast, presented by BetDSI. I'm Brian Hemminger, joined today by leading mixed martial arts odds maker Nick Kalikas to break down this Friday's Combate 45 event, which takes place in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Nick creates the opening betting odds for Combate events, so he'll break down the eight fights with betting odds on this card, providing extensive analysis and a pick for those fights after doing film study and research for the event. Combate 45 will air on the TV networks Univision, TUDN, and Televisa in Mexico with live streaming of the undercard on Facebook Watch this Friday night. Let's dive right in. Now, kicking things off on the preliminary card is a battle of MMA professional debuters as Claudia Zamora, who is 0-0, takes on Abigail Montes, who is also 0-0. Now, Nick. Where did you open this fight, and how has the public shifted things so far? First off, let me just say, another awesome event coming up this Friday night, Combate Americas 45. I'm looking forward to it. They've been putting on some great shows. I hope you guys are enjoying all the betting lines being been put out there. I mean, so far, so good. We're getting a good response, a lot of action coming in on at the sports books, and a lot of good betting and a lot of good fights are being put on. So, again, Combate Americas, tune in this Friday night. Check your local listings. Check our website as well, and check CombateAmericas.com for more information. Getting right into the fights. Starting things off with a banger. I mean, this is going to be an awesome ladies fight. Zamora versus Montez. They're making their official pro MMA debuts, but this is going to be fireworks from the start, I believe. So getting right into it, I opened the line with Zamora minus 205 to come back on Montez at plus 155. And right now, looking over at the Don Best screen, we're seeing the line all the way up to about minus 310 to come back plus 240. Now there's some different lines out there depending on which sports book, but that seems to be about the average right now. So minus three to one for Zamora. The line did get bet up and I understand it. I mean, this is is an awesome fight. Both these ladies, like I said, making their official pro debuts, but Zamora has more real-time MMA experience. She's 5-0 and as an amateur. Um, she does have the more well-rounded skill set overall. She's an aggressive fighter, and if you look at it, I mean, on film, she does have more footage available and, and again, more experience that people are kind of looking at, and I think she's more prepared and more capable at this point in her career to get the W here over Montez. Montez is going to be game, though. She's a striking base fighter, has some real skill on the feet. I mean, she has really good technique. She's capable finishing fights that way as well and she's rounding out her MMA game she trains at a good camp um, Lobo gym in Mexico that's with Alexa Grasso and and crew so she is definitely working on more aspects of her MMA game than just her striking but she is a striking based fighter so again the early action is coming in on Zamora basically because she's the more well-rounded fighter I think people are on the right track so hopefully we get some dog action back as the line escalates a little bit more Um, I think we will see that because again there's a lot to be determined still for Montez. I mean, there's not much out there on her, so a lot of people are coming in betting this a little blindly on Zamora, and I think Montez on the feet at least will put on a better show than people imagine, and it's going to be competitive that way. But make no mistake, I think people are on the right track here. Zamora probably gets it done. Now moving up to the lightweight division, we have Hilario Portales, who is and 3-1, taking on Sebastian Lasada, who is 1-0. and Now, Nick, what's the MMA oddsmaker's perspective on this one? I open Portales minus 125, the comeback on Losada at minus 105. And right now what we're seeing over at the Don Best screen, Portales is at minus 190, the comeback on Losada at plus 150. So again, another spot where Portales did get bet up. The line at first kind of bounced back and forth, but now we're seeing more steady action coming in at Portales. And another spot where you have your striking base fighter in Losada taking on a more complete MMA fighter in Portales. And Losada, again, the same situation similar to Montez as we were just talking about in the first fight. Losada is more of a striking base fighter. She, he trains at the same camp um, with Grasso, Alexa Grasso and crew at Lobo Gym. Um, so there's a lot to like about him. He is, again, a striking base fighter, though, and he doesn't have that complete MMA skill set as Portales does. He's still developing that aspect. So I think, again, people are fading 
Losada's overall game right now and, and a little bit more leaning towards Portales. And I think that's probably right as well overall, because I think this is an excellent matchup. Even on the feet, they're both long um, for the weight class at 155 pounds. They're both about six feet tall or so. Um, I think Portales, again, is a little bit further ahead overall. He's got the better ground game. He's a developing striker on the feet. He can be effective for sure, but he still looks raw at times. And that's where Losada is going to have the advantage. Losada on the feet is a sniper. He's got better technique. He's going to really do a lot of damage to Portales if this fight stays up. Uh, for a long period of time. So Portales is going to look to take this fight to the floor. I think he's probably going to be able to do so. And on the ground is where, he, again, he's going to have the bigger edge. And I think he's capable of dropping some bombs, possibly even looking for submission and getting Losada out of there. So I understand the action coming in Portales' way. But again, Losada, I think, has been putting in the work. He's going to probably perform better than we all anticipate here a little bit. And I think the action coming in this strong of Portales is a little bit unjustified, really, because, again, Losada, he does have a little bit more um, experience than Montez. He's not making uh, his pro debut. Actually, he's listed at 2-0 and as a pro. Um, some sites have him as 1-0 and as well. So he does have some real-time MMA experience as well. So I think this is going to be more competitive than the current betting public uh, currently believes it is going to be. So with that said, I still think that the, you got to side with the more complete MMA game in Portales. I just don't have the confidence level that uh, a lot of the folks out there do right now. So my pick is going to be Portales to win as well. The value is probably gone at this point, though. So it's dog or pass. Now dropping down to the Bantamweight division, we have Donnie Matos, who is 18 and 7, taking on Federico, Federico Betancourt, who is 3 and 6. Now Nick, where did this line open and how has the public shifted things so far? I put Matos minus 1,000, the comeback on Bentoncourt at plus 500. And what we're seeing right now over at BetDSI and the Don Best screen, we are seeing Matos coming in at minus 1,000, the comeback um, plus 525 or so. So, again, staying basically steady, not a lot of action coming in on this fight. You look at the records on paper, Matos 18 and 7, Bentoncourt 3 and 6. I think a, a lot of people are going to be scared off betting a below 500 fighter in Bentoncourt at this spot right here, going against a much – at least on paper, better fighter, more uh, well-versed fighter. I mean, if you look at Matos, he's definitely a complete MMA fighter. I mean, he has um, wins by knockout, by submission, of course. And looking at his opponents, though, that's the problem with me here with Matos. I mean, I think it's a little bit smoke and mirrors. He hasn't faced a lot of high-level competition, so he's going out there basically smashing some cans overall in his career. Um, out of Brazil, of course. So, you know, that circuit in Brazil at times can be really decent, and you're facing – pretty underrated competition or the total opposite where you're facing a lot of cans again. And I think it's more of Matos being you know, the type of fighter that has beaten not so great fighters at this point. And when he does get the finish, it's over people like that. So even though he's minus a thousand right now, I think the line is a little bit too high, believe it or not. Now, again, he's capable of winning this matchup against Bentoncourt because he is a better fighter across the board. There's no question about it, but I'm not as confident, um, obviously as the current betting line indicates at 10 to one right now, Bentoncourt, it's not bad. I mean, he's got some basic striking technique. He's not going to blow you away on the feet. Um, he basically uses that to close the distance and get the fight to the floor. He wants to grind you out a little bit. He's going to have difficulty with Matos here because even if he is able to get some takedowns, I think Matos is able to submit him. So Betancourt's uh, submission defense isn't that great. So with all that said, I mean, Matos is still 10 to 1 for a reason. I think he does get the finish here over Betancourt more than likely. I would not lay the chalk, though, at this spot. I mean, like I said, Matos still has, to me at least, face a little bit better competition. I'm sure Combate is going to match him up if, you know, as long as he keeps on winning and progressing um, with harder competition here in the near future. And we're going to get to see him tested. But for this fight, at least, I think it's a fight Matos can breeze through, but I wouldn't bet it here at 10 to one for sure. Now, moving all the way up to the heavyweight division, we have Alejandro Solorzano, who is five and two taking on Giovanni Sarin, who is six and three. Now, Nick, What's the MMA odds maker's perspective on this one? Solarzano open minus 150, the comeback on Saren at plus 120. And right now, looking over Don Best, we are seeing the line flipped. Right now, it's actually minus 140 for Saren, the comeback plus 110 for Solarzano. So line margins have tightened up a little bit, and it did flip over. More actually coming in Saren's way. I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, Solarzano, I thought, would be a little bit more of the popular opinion. He's going to be the longer fighter. He's going to tower over Saren in this spot here. Um, and he's a striking base fighter that actually has some decent experience, and I like what I see from the big man. I mean, he really shows a lot of toughness, durability, uh, some good fight IQ as well, and he uses that length well. The problem is, he lacks a bit of a ground game, um, and that could present him some problems here against Saren. Saren, 
I like what I see. I mean, he's short, but he uses that uh, that length or disadvantage to to his advantage. He turns it around and he uses that speed, and he usually uh, counters well with that. Gets inside and closes the distance pretty well. He has a pretty decent background as far as experience against high level competition. I mean, he's definitely fought the better competition overall. He's a Bellator vet, king of the cage vet. He's been in the game for a long time, but basically the last few years he's just kind of getting back into things. Um, and, and the truth is, he faced a similar opponent recently as well that was a longer fighter. Um, I believe it was in Kabate. Um, the video the footage is out there. And, and basically, Saren came out there and he performed well. I mean, he had to weather the early storm and he was able to get the fight to the ground and, and get the submission win there. So I think that's going to be his path to victory here again. He's going to have to weather that storm, kind of fight inside that length of Solorzano here and try to get this fight to the ground. And once on the ground, I think Saren is going to be able to uh, take advantage and, and maybe get the W here. But if it stays standing, it's going to be interesting. I don't think Saren's a fish out of water on the feet either. I think he does have a lot of power, like I said, and he times things well. So this is going to be an interesting fight back and forth. I, realistically, it is a coin flip type of fight because I think both of them are tough. Both of them have no uh, quit in them from what I've seen so far as well. So this really has fireworks written all over it. I just think Saren is the more complete fighter at this point. If he can utilize a ground game, he probably Win. So the early money on Saren, I think, is the right way to go. Um, at where it stands right now, though, there might be some value opening up on Solorzano, and especially if the line continues to climb for Saren, I think then Solorzano is going to be a little bit underestimated so or underrated at that point. So for right now, my pure pick is Saren, but be cautious if you're going to bet it. I think the value is starting to go away. Now dropping down to the flyweight division, we have Heinrich Wesmer, who is six and 6-4, taking on Axel Osuna, who is and 2-0. Now, Nick, where did this fight open, and how has the public shifted things so far? I open Osuna minus 425 to come back on Wassimer at plus 305. And right now, looking over at the Don Best screen, we are seeing Wassimer and Osuna. Osuna is currently minus 340 to come back 260 on Wassimer. So line margins have tightened up. More action coming in on Wassimer overall. He does have more experience. I'm not really that surprised. I honestly opened this one up, hoping to attract a little bit of dog action on Wassimer in this spot. Again, more experienced fighter in Wassimer, but man, make no mistake, Axel Osana is a stud. The guy is a young gun. He has some serious potential at age 23. I really like what I see. He's going to have some length in this fight um, as far as pure reach advantage over Wassimer here. Um, he's a southpaw on the feet. I mean, the guy is definitely talented across the board. He's got a slick ground game. And at this point of his career, I think as far as fight IQ, it's above and beyond what you can expect. So his striking's on point, his wrestling, his power, his instinct, everything at, at age 23 is above and beyond where he really should be. So I think Abate has a legit star in the making here with Usana, but he is going to be tested here against Wassimer. And that's why people are coming in and betting Wassimer here. Because again, I mentioned it off the rip. I mean, the guy is definitely a more experienced fighter. He's also a submission fighter. So Osana, typically speaking, has been finishing his fights thus far as a pro by submission. So submission versus submission fighter here, it could get a little bit interesting. And I can understand why people think there is some value on Wasmer. But I think overall, even though he has a little bit of wrestling, he gets himself in bad spots even on the ground. And I think that's where Osana could take some advantage. And on the feet, I think Osana is by far the better striker overall as well. So I think Osana has more ways to win this fight as long as he doesn't get caught by submission, because again, Wasmer is more of a, a submission-based fighter. He actually trains at 10th Planet BJJ, amongst other places as well. So the guy is getting some decent training partners, decent, obviously, um, knowledge from his coaching staff as well. Both these guys um, are in a good spot, but I do like what I see from Usana more so than Wasmer. So I think the dog value that people are assuming is on Wasmer is kind of, again, fool's gold in, the, gold in this spot. And I think there might be some value that opens up on Usana. And if your book allows you to take parlays, Usana is definitely one of those types that you could throw in a parlay, even maybe with some football this weekend as well. But I think Usana, again, is a stud. He's going to come out here and perform well and get the W. So my pick is Usana, and there's definitely some value that opens up on Usana as the line continues to drop. Now moving on to the main card in the women's strawweight division, we have Saray Roscoe, who is four and three, taking on Silvana Gomez Juarez, who is six and two. Now, Nick, what's the MMA oddsmakers' perspective on this one? I open Gomez minus three fifty five, the comeback on Orozco at plus two sixty five. And right now looking over at the Donbass screen, we are seeing minus two oh five for Gomez, the comeback on Orozco plus 160. So line dropped, more action coming in on Orozco. I understand it. I mean, really, both of these ladies are extremely talented and they have a bright future ahead of them. Um, 
Gomez has been in the game a little bit longer. She's got more overall experience. She's faced definitely a higher level competition. Orozco, though, I mean, no slouch in her own right. She just basically uh, coming off of a loss in Ryzen in Japan. I mean, that organization obviously is a, a big time organization. So her traveling on the road and, and losing by the way she did, she just got beat on the ground. I mean, it was, she got outclassed on the ground basically is what it came down to, but that's not the type of fighter she is. So Rosco getting into her first, I guess she's a very solid up and coming young lady. I really like what I see from her, especially in her boxing. I mean, she works well behind her lead jab, throws combos decent, and she also has clean and capable grappling as well. Um, but she is a bit slow. She lacks that explosiveness you want to see. Um, and she usually she, I think in this spot, especially she wants to get this fight to the ground. And, and again, she, even though, she definitely has some improving to do on the ground. I think at times she's going to be um, needing to do that and get maybe top position and getting some takedowns to kind of sway things her way. And, and against Gomez, she's going to have to do all she can because this is a very difficult matchup for her. I mean, look, getting into Gomez now, she's a beast of a fighter. I mean, she's aggressive, heavy-handed. She has a killer instinct. She really bullies people at times when you look at her. I mean, her fighting style is that type. She just goes after it. She goes for takedowns. Uh, she got big ground and pound. Her cardio is an issue, though, at times because she has so much aggression that she tends to wear herself out. So I do kind of worry about that from Gomez, especially in this fight, because Orozco is more of the composed fighter. She's more of a steady paced fighter. So Orozco has that advantage over Gomez in that spot. But overall, I mean, Gomez has the better experience, like I mentioned earlier. I mean, she's fought some big names already. I mean, the likes of Lipsky, Botello, Melo, all fighters that are in the UFC. I mean, Melo just fought um, this past weekend in Mexico City and, you know, and she ended up suffering a loss uh, to Aldana. But I mean, Gomez has a win over Melo, so she's capable of fighting on the big stage like that as well. As, again, this is going to be an awesome fight. Both of these ladies are talented, and, and Kabate did another great job putting these two ladies on this card. So another fun fight. I just think it's going to be too much too soon for Roscoe. I think Gomez is just, again, a, a levels above her right now. Her aggressiveness, her tenacity overall is going to be too much for Roscoe. And I think Gomez, even if, it, if she starts slowing down, she still wins on the scorecards, or she comes up with a possible finish here as well. So my pick is Gomez. I think all the action coming in on Roscoe, I can understand it, but now at 2-1, to one, there's no question for me at least. Gomez opened up some value, and you got to kind of make a small stab at Gomez at the current price of 2-1 to one or so. So the play and the pick for me is Gomez. Now, moving on to the co-main event of the evening in the Bantamweight division, we have Victor Hugo Madrigal, who is 8-2, and two, taking on Marcelo Rojo, who is 15-6. and six. Now, Nick, where did this fight open, and how does the public shift it think so far? I opened Rojo minus 385, the comeback on Madrigal at plus 265. And right now, what we're seeing over at Don Best on the screen is Rojo at minus 270, the comeback plus 205. On Madrigal. So again, another spot where dog action came in. A lot of people are dog happy on these Combate cars lately because there's been some good dogs coming through. No doubt about it. So this could be another spot where they are correct because matchup wise, this is an intriguing fight. I think Madrigal is one of those fighters that kind of has to weather that early storm and then manages as the fight progresses to come on and uh, do better at times. And where Rojo is kind of the opposite. He's, he's more of a front runner. And he ends up kind of slowing down as the fight progresses because he is such a, a another guy, one of these guys is just a killer. He goes after it early on. So, I mean, styles make fights, and this should be interesting. And I think that's why the people are coming on the dog early on. I mean, on paper, both of these guys have decent records. I, I don't think you compare the two overall as far as skill set. I think even though they're both well-rounded fighters, Rojo is the better fighter at this stage, I think, and he's a level above Madrigal. Again, I think Madrigal's best attribute in this fight is is his toughness and his ability to kind of weather the storm and maybe turn things around and possibly look for submission on the ground over Rojo, but Rojo is a well-rounded fighter in his own right. He's exciting to watch. I mean, he has very good striking, power in his hands, power in his kicks as well, and he throws in combos. He moves well. He's light on the feet. He's got an outstanding clinch game as well. Um, he is hittable at times, though. That's the problem with him and he is a bit chinny but he's tough he's one of these guys that might get tagged get dropped a little bit but he, he hasn't been knocked out yet in his career so he kind of gets back up and recovers kind of quick um so again i don't think madrigal is going to be that type of fighter though that gives him a lot of problems on the feet i think it's going to be rojo again being the bully in this spot um the tenacity of him even on the ground i think rojo is going to have his way with madrigal early on the only path of victory here i think for madrigal is again to get basically this fight on the ground and try to work his sub attack maybe catch rojo's back 
Um, Rojo has been subbed. His submission defense is spotty at times. It's not as bad as his record indicates, but I mean, you know, obviously half of his losses coming by submission is what I'm saying, but I think it's, it's a little bit better than that, but that is a path of victory for Madrigal. So if Madrigal gets it done, I think that's the way he does it. The crowd's going to be behind him as well. He is a local fighter and, and I think that that's going to probably help him. But with all that being said, I think he's going to be outgunned here. I think Rojo is the better fighter, and I think he does get it done. So this is another spot where you could definitely make a small straight bet on Rojo at the price. If not, put him in a parlay. I think there is still some value there. As the price goes down a bit and Madrigal continues to get action, it opens up even more value. So I think Rojo is going to shine here. I think he gets the W here. And again, look for a parlay material with Rojo. Now moving on to the main event of the evening in the featherweight division, we have Chase Gibson, who is 7-3. and three taking on Horacio Gutierrez, who is five and 5-3. Now, Nick, what's the MMA oddsmaker's perspective on this one? Awesome main event. I can't wait to see this fight. I mean, it's going to be action-packed for sure. I opened Gibson minus 260, the comeback on Gutierrez at plus 200. And right now, what we're seeing over at Don Best across the market, we're looking at minus 145 for Gibson, the comeback about plus 105. There is plus 115s out there as well. So let's say 145 plus 115. Gibson, the favorite, dropped drastically. Gutierrez getting a lot more support. Of course, he's the ultimate fighter veteran. He's the more well-known fighter here uh, for the UFC hardcore fans as well. Uh, he's a tough Latin America 2 finalist. He's coming off of a, a win over a UFC vet as well. I mean, obviously, he's not on the UFC roster anymore. Um, but after his release, he did have some success outside of the UFC. And he, he does have a win over another UFC vet, Chris Avila, in his last fight. But looking at that fight, actually, that was a head scratcher a little bit because he easily could have lost that fight. Now, he got some late takedowns um, and he did a couple good things to kind of sway the rounds his way a little bit. But it was a close competitive fight overall. And again, of course, Gutierrez having that UFC experience, he's fought better overall competition. There's no question about it. So he's ahead of Gibson in many ways, and I understand why people are coming in that way. But Gibson is one of these guys that, in my opinion, is a very underrated fighter that might not be as well known yet to the you know the MMA fans out there. But after a quality win, like I think he's going to get over Gutierrez, that's going to change. His brother Cooper Gibson recently also got a big win and pulled off an upset in Kabate. And I just think this isn't going to be an upset to me or even as the odds indicate here if Gibson does win. But I think in many fans' opinion, at least um, in the MMA community, they might feel like it's a slight upset. Um, again, not according to the betting odds. But that said, getting into Chase Gibson a little bit, I mean, he's a really solid fighter. Uh, solid on the feet. He's really tough, pushes forward. He does really crazy uh, bombs that he throws at you at times with these angles, unorthodox angles at times as well. Uh, so I like what I see from him on the feet because you cannot um, ever kind of take a moment to relax because he can come at you with something heavy and, and just put you on your butt with that. So um, also he does mix things up with his wrestling. He's got an underrated ground game and, and his ground IQ is very smart. I think he scrambles out of bad spots when he gets in trouble and he does definitely work his submission game and utilize his good ground and pound and usually gets positional control over a lot of his opponents as well. Um, so with that said, Gutierrez is a striking base fighter. He's definitely has some wrestling and he's been improving his overall game. So this should go back and forth. I just think that I trust Gibson's chin overall. I think he's a little bit tougher at this stage in the game. I think he's got the better ground game. So he's a, a more ahead. Even the Gutierrez has the more real time and, and better experience over quality competition. I think Gibson is the more complete mixed martial arts fighter. I think Gibson can, can win this fight on the ground. I think Gibson can win this fight on the feet as well and get the knockout. So I understand that Gutierrez is intriguing as an underdog bet, and obviously the value has gotten smashed if you like Gutierrez. I mean, the line dropped significantly since the opening line. I think the value ap actually opened up significantly on Gibson now at the price that it's currently at. And it probably will close maybe a little bit higher depending on what the overall betting community does, of course, as well. Maybe there'll be more uh, Gutierrez backers coming in as well. So we'll see how it goes but I think the right play to make here honestly at this price is Gibson he's just even though Gutierrez is gonna you know give him all he can handle because Gutierrez you have to respect his boxing and he might be able to land a takedown or two I just still think that as this fight progresses Gibson is gonna find his spot on the feed or on the ground to end this fight so I don't expect it to go all three rounds I think Gibson is gonna finish inside if it does hit the scorecards it'll be probably pretty competitive and maybe Gutierrez steals you know a competitive decision but I don't think it's gonna play out that way I think it's Gibson or pass here and especially with the line drop so the betting public, I think, is going to be wrong. I think Chase Gibson comes away with a win in the main event here, and it should be an outstanding fight, an exciting fight. So my pick and bet is Chase Gibson. So that'll do it for a full event breakdown for Combate 45. Special thanks to BetDSI. Good luck, everyone, and hopefully the betting gods are on your side this weekend.